Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fleckish Channel. Humans have always had an innate drive to create technology to face challenges and improve their quality of life. Some machines have been able to break traditional patterns by using innovative methods to propel themselves, such as this British hovercraft. Hover Travel, a transport company in the United Kingdom, offers a scenic journey to its passengers between the South Sea and the Isle of Wight in this enormous hovercraft. Founded in 1965, this company is the oldest hovercraft operator in the world and remains the only year-round public hovercraft service. The hovercraft is equipped with its double entrance at the front, where its ramps allow access to cargo and people coming in and out of the transporter. Additionally, the boarding process is assisted by company members who help people and catering supplies enter quickly and in order. All hovercraft ports have an inclined ramp to help the transition between water and land, which makes it easier to exit the vehicle. The hovercraft runs uh, every day, 363 days of the year, operates around about 70 services a day, runs from early morning till the evening and caters for commuters and tourists alike. More than 70 passengers can sit comfortably inside the hovercraft the result of a change of focus by the company, opting for more attention to the transport of people than vehicles as it used to do in the past. The craft itself runs on two engines, port and starboard side, uh, and it has a lift system as well, port and starboard side, uh, so they need to be checking the grease levels, everything like that. Unlike other large hovercraft models, the Solent Flyer only requires two motors for the lift and propulsion systems. This is part of the design of its model, the 1200TD, created by Griffin Hoverwork, which prioritizes passenger transportation. Its powerful MAN D2862 diesel engines offer a combined power of 2,158 horsepower to help pilots like Nick navigate quickly through the Solent Strait. Additionally, by being equipped with this hybrid system, the design of this hovercraft achieves a reduction in noise levels, which is an important factor for the nearby population. Upon reaching the destination, the inclined platform helps the pilot smoothly enter the port without damaging the skirt structure. Once the passengers get off the hovercraft, the boarding process is repeated 
with the crew members following the instructions step by step. During non-operating times, pilots like Nick perform detailed inspections on each section of the hovercraft. On the outside, Nick must verify that the skirt is in good condition, since it is the component that maintains the lift pressure. If Nick finds any problems with any element, he immediately notifies the maintenance team to begin repairs. Once ready, the hovercraft can begin its daily operations transporting passengers. The hovercraft is a prominent example of the variety that exists in the options for transporting over water. However, being able to move over land as well as water, this type of vehicle has also been useful to military forces, such as the U.S. Marine Corps and Navy. Currently, these forces deploy a vehicle called Landing Craft Air Cushion, which has been in service since the 1980s for amphibious operations. Since then, its use has continued, thanks to the advantages it offers by being able to transport a considerable number of troops and vehicles, from ship to the shore, and across the beach. Through its four TF-40 gas turbine engines, where two turbines generate the lift by creating pressure at the bottom, and the other two create the propulsion of the vehicle, the LCAC can be mobilized for a crucial mission of the Defense Forces. Because this vehicle is floating, there is no worry about the effects of the surface condition below. Hence, these vehicles can be used for amphibious missions launched from transfer docks to the coasts. From these platforms, the crew can organize the logistics to load the LCACs of both troops and vehicles. Its 75-ton capacity even allows it to transport M1 Abram tanks. With its levitation, the LCAC can easily leave the transfer dock ramps and move quickly to the landing point. Its turbines, in addition to giving it speeds of 40 knots when fully loaded, also allow it to have an operating range of 200 nautical miles, so it can reach critical areas from safe places in the distance. During the unloading process, vehicles and equipment quickly leave the LCAC towards the beach using its ramp which gives strategic and tactical value to this hovercraft.
all these operations are carried out efficiently by a team of specialized crew that focuses on the condition and functionality of the vehicle. This includes the maintenance and control of the pressure system under the vehicle that allows them to move along the beach without problems. By offering great versatility when traveling these terrains, the LCAC is also used in evacuation support tasks or mine countermeasure operations. The effectiveness of these vehicles and the military forces demonstrates the potential of their technology for transporting people and cargo. Nonetheless, not all military vehicles are capable of operating in such amphibious conditions. As a result, there is an imperative need for bridges that can be used by military vehicles to cross over bridges and seas. The U.S. military constructs various types of bridges to transport military vehicles and tanks over waterways, ensuring that they can navigate diverse terrains and rapidly deploy forces during operations. These bridges are designed to be strong, durable, and portable, providing essential and quick infrastructural support for advancing troops and equipment in combat or in strategic locations where permanent bridges are unavailable or destroyed. Many seek to improve the infrastructure of water routes to increase the speed and efficiency of transportation. This implementation of technology in making water routes easier to navigate is seen with the Scottish Canals Project, which maintains a system of 137 miles of waterways. Of this network of canals, one of the most important attractions is the iconic Falkirk Wheel near the suburb of Tamferhill. This engineering marvel is the world's only rotating ship lift, connecting the Forth and Clyde Canal to the Union Canal. Such a system allows one or two boats to enter gondolas filled with water, which rotate to allow the boat on the lower canal to go up, while the boat on the upper canal goes down. It has remained in operation since its opening in 2002 as part of the project Millennium Link that sought to reconnect the two channels that had been separated since the 1930s. Before this advanced system was in operation, these canals were connected by sections of 11 locks. Since then, and during the rest of the 20th century, these canals remained disconnected, affecting the beneficiary population of this network. All of this gave the motivation for the maintenance and construction of projects, such as the Falkirk Wheel, and to reactivate the region's economy.
for the system to work, both gondolas must weigh the same. So the 600 tons of water in each one is partly displaced by the boats, balancing the weight. These conditions are always monitored from the control room where they ensure that all systems are functional to rotate safely. To keep the gondolas always horizontal while the wheel rotates, each of them moves on small wheels that fit into a curved rail fixed to the inside edge of the opening of each arm. Also, as a safety measure, the system has a series of gears linked between the gondolas and the arms that maintain the speed of these sections. As it rotates, it is possible to see the design of the wheel, inspired by various regional sources, including a Celtic double-headed axe. The cyclic movement of all these components generates great stress and risk of fatigue damage, which is why most of its sections have connections with bolts instead of welds. These conditions also encourage the primary use of steel as a construction material, being assembled at Butterley Engineering's Steelworks in Derbyshire. This structure is expected to last at least 120 years, which led to the use of these quality materials. When turning, the wheel raises the boats to a height of 79 feet. Once the system has rotated and reached its final position, the hydraulic gates open to make way for the boats. This entire process lasts a total of five minutes, which makes it the fastest and most efficient way to climb between the water channels. The connection and importance of aquatic transportation has influenced the development of technologies in all areas of this industry, whether with innovative vehicles or the development of a unique infrastructure. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.